Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another Ion Africa. My name is Awasar, and I'm Assistant Director for Academic Affairs at the African Studies Center at Michigan State University. And Ion Africa is our weekly seminary series. We're very, very happy today to have Maimuna Dembele as our guest speaker. Uh, we have been trying to have her for a while now. Uh, but every time we had issues, but this time is a good one. So we're really happy to, to have her with, with, with us today to talk about music in, in Africa. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of things going on so that are not that positive, but we're, we're happy uh, to start this first Eye on Africa of the semester with a, a, a happy topic, I, if I can say. Uh, so before I pass it on to her, a brief introduction. Maimuna is Senior Executive Communication, PR Broadcaster, Cultural and Creative Industry Specialist with over 20 years of experience. She is a journalism graduate and her career in radio began in 1996 in Mali at Kaira FM. In Senegal, she worked at Yusundu's radio station 7FM Passionate about hip hop, Maimona created and hosted a hip hop show called Blaster, where she used to interview upcoming artists. She also worked at the prominent Vibe Radio. She founded the association Hers for Women and Girls Empowerment to Arch. She has been the chairperson of the Music in Africa Foundation for two terms, 2018-2020 and currently 2022-2024. Maimona is an ambassador of the uh, Made in Africa brand, is passionate about the continent's creativity. Thank you so much for being here, Maimona, and welcome. Now I pass it on to you. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Awa. We finally made it. <laughs> I know that um, it's <laughs> been quite a while we were trying to have this conversation. Um, so thank you for having me as the first guest of the of the fall season, um, and I hope um, it's going to be a great season uh, for I on 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 Africa. Uh, so thank you so much, and Jira uh, Jif to to Michael Green, uh, who's a long time brother. We miss him, so we hope to see him in Senegal sometimes in 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 twenty twenty four. Um, yes, um, like yeah, like you said, our we're living in very challenging times, um, and so it's always great to to talk about um, to talk about interesting subjects um, and subjects that make us laugh or or dance. <laughs> and I think that today the subject is going to to make us dance. We're talking about music. We're talking about music on the continent. We're talking about music in Africa. Um, so just to give a little bit of um, background info information, Music in Africa is a, is a foundation um, and it's a portal um, that is owned and, and, and governed. Um, uh, it's a nonprofit organization that we uh, formed on July 2013. So this year we're celebrating our 10th year anniversary and we are just so proud of the work we have done so far. So the offices are um, based in Johannesburg, South Africa. And what we do with music in Africa is every year we go um, in a different African city um, where we have our um, annual general meeting and then we have showcases. Uh, we, we get together for four days uh, with music professionals um, from the continent and, and, and from the world. So. Uh, we're going to Dar es Salaam in November, so it's every year in November. So next November, inshallah, we're going um, to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and that's where we will be celebrating our 10th year anniversary. So the, the aim and objective of music in Africa, uh, and these are the broad um, ob objectives, is to provide uh, reliable and useful information um, that promotes the African music sector and its operators on the continent and in the diaspora. It's connecting and promoting exchange um, between creatives on the continent. It's also improving the distribution and accessibility uh, of um, the music on the continent. 
uh, facilitating and promoting through research, development, and education, because we do have programs that empower people in the music industry. Um, and so we, we created a website uh, where artists, promoters, uh, distributors um, can have their own page for free, uh, which makes things easier. And it allows them, it allows them to discover existing music um, in Africa. And we've, we've, we've had really great connections happening through music in Africa. So we're very, very um, proud of that. So the portal is musicinafrica.net. And then the projects, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have the Sound Connects Fund, uh, which is an initiative um, that's aimed to accelerate development and increase the capacity of the cultural and creative sector in Southern Africa. So uh, the organization is based in South Africa and we fund programs in Angola, Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. And then we have Access. Access is the Music in Africa conference that I was telling you about that happens every year in a different um, African city. And then uh, when I was first elected um, president, uh, there was this um, program that I launched. And at that time we were in, in Ghana, we were having the conference in Ghana. It's really a program dear to my heart. It's called Gender at Work. And it's a woman focused program uh, that's aimed to upskilling and increasing the participation of female professionals in the music industry. And so we're happy about this program because some of the women who were trained in 2019 in Ghana, just before the pandemic, were able to work on big stage uh, like Womex. Uh, so that's also the aim of music in Africa. Not only uh, we do um, this capacity building, but we try to make sure that these people also can work in big festivals on the continent or outside of the, of the continent. So when we talk about the music industry nowadays, I, I we'll, 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 we have to talk about Afrobeat, we have to talk about Nigerian music, we have to talk about Verna Boy, uh, who's an African giant. Um, so African music is, is really getting bigger um, and gaining more and more um, popularity around the world. Uh, so apart from record sales for African music, music itself draws um, other kinds of review news. Uh, when we talk about concerts, when we talk about the tourism sector, uh, when we talk about brand merchandising, um, so it's 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 a huge sector and it's 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 growing. It's creating also more and more jobs uh, on the local market, and that's just amazing to to see. So in recent years with uh, worldwide hits like Master TJ's Jerusalem, who didn't dance to Jerusalem and Yay by Mr. Werner Boy, uh, we've realized that the rhythm of Africa has been making a massive, massive, massive impact globally. Um, and for the longest time, African music was exiled into a category. And I know we were having this conversation a few years ago at Womex because all the African music was put under the umbrella of world music. I mean, even when we look at the Grammys, it's always under world music. When we know that we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of genres um, in, 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 in Africa. And now we're talking more and more about Afrobeats. So thanks to, to our Nigerian brothers and, 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 and sister, um, so that's making a big impact. And I know that Nigeria has just has made its footprint uh, on the world. Uh, their music, you hear it everywhere you go. You will hear an Afrobeat song. Um, and it, it's not just back in the days it was Fela. Uh, and nowadays we have this young generation of Nigerians who are doing great, great, great things, even across the continent. Uh, we've seen Burna Boy, Madison Square Garden. I mean, in our wildest dreams, we had never imagined that we would have an African artist um, do Madison Square Garden. So that's, that's huge uh, for the people in the, in the music sector. Um, but I think that um, 
one of the factors also contributing um, to this Nigerian migration um, and diaspora, uh, which is vast, is that uh, Nigerians are everywhere. They're everywhere in the world. They still are very connected um, to their roots. Um, they listen to their music and they have a big community. Wherever they are, we realize that Nigerians have a huge, huge, huge community. And usually they're also very successful, even when they live in the diaspora, they're very successful. Um, so as a community, of course, they continually prioritize the consumption of their culture. When we talk about the fashion industry, you talk about uh, real estate. I mean, they, they, they do support their communities. And that's really important. If, if you want to be big, if you're trying to, to reach the global world, you have to, you have to, your, your community has to support you. You have to have the support of your, of your community. And I think that's, that's very important. And uh, we've also seen international collaborations um, over the years. Um, Nigerian music is exported, but uh, we've seen so many uh, collaborations between big names um, and, and, and African musicians. So that also helps a lot. Um, and now we have the rise of Aman Piano, especially when we're talking about the South. We're talking about Zimbabwe, we're talking about um, South Africa, we're talking about Tanzania. Um, so yes, it was Afrobeat, but now we see that Aman Piano also is, is, is doing big. It's doing really, really big. Um, because even during the pandemic, we realized that because I'm on piano, it's, it's really jazzy. It's a jazzy dance. Um, so people were just doing challenges at home. Uh, DJs were playing music, um, out of their living room, uh, just trying to, to connect with people. And we, we, we could hear a, a lot of, um, I'm on piano music. Um, and now major labels uh, who were not interested in the African continent now are coming and investing really, really, really big in Africa. Uh, you've seen one of our own, um, a DJ from South Africa uh, who won um, uh, a Grammy award and that's Black Coffee. Uh, he works with a lot of Amantiano music and a lot of Afro beats. That's pretty much the type of music that he 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 plays uh, when he's DJing. Uh, so labels, international labels, see that um, there is an investment value um, in the African music market, and so they're expanding their footprints in in Africa. Um, and it includes a range of investments in business, in talent, in headquarters. Uh, for instance, in 2021, I think 2020 or 2021. Um, it was the creation of Def Jam Africa. Uh, it was created by Universal Music Group uh, based in Johannesburg, South Africa and in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and now the label has worked with um, hip hop artists, Afrobeat artists and people who are also into, into trap music uh, from across the continent. Um, another um, major label was also Warner Music Group um, who confirmed of um, investing in, in Africori. And Africori was uh, an African um, distribution group and rights management. Um, so they did invest in it. We had Sony who, who, who came. Uh, so we're having huge, huge, huge um, labels who are now coming on the, on the continent. Um, and uh, so Music in Africa, who's been here for 10 years now is really, we were like, okay, we did great because um, the aim was was to be able to connect um, the world to African music. We've done it for the past 10 years, and now we're having majors and we're having um, big names who are coming and, and, and joining us in this. Um, and for, for a very long time, people thought that it was just entertainment. It is entertainment, but it's not just entertainment. It's, it's a real business um, creating thousands and thousands of jobs. Um, we've seen now a lot of organizations are investing a lot of music in what they call the cultural sector. Uh, we had uh, we have the GIZ, which is um, the Germans who are investing a lot of money. Um, the African Union, who's also investing a lot of money. 
um, in the creative sector. Uh, we had recently the IFC um, and the director who's from Senegal, who was on the continent, uh, who visited a few countries. Um, they also have a program where they put money um, in the cultural sector. So it's a, it's, it's a huge sector. Um, we've realized that 75% um, of the continent is young people. Young people mostly are in the creative sector. So it's a, it's a great niche um, to create jobs, but to also create great, 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 great opportunities. Uh, we are seeing it happen. We're very happy um, about it. Um, recently, there was um, a program that was um, funded by the European Union here in Senegal, and it was around traditional music. Um, how can we link tradition and modernity? So we people worked um, on traditional music instruments, um, the sound of traditional music instruments, and how can we now incorporate it in, 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 in nowadays music? Um, so that's that's what I wanted to say. If there are some questions, um, I can stop right there for now. Um, take questions if people want to interact. Uh, we can do that before um, I, I continue. Oh, I don't know if know if there were questions. I don't see in the chat. Well, we, we don't have questions yet, but uh, the audience know that they can ask that. You can type it in the Q&A section. You can also raise your hand and be unmuted and ask your uh, questions aloud. That's that's a possibility. And so really thank you for, for that uh, presentation. And my question first was uh, in relation to traditional music, really, well, well, with what you ended. So I was just wondering how does that fit in the whole music in Africa organization? Like what's what projects are you doing to kind of, I mean, my question is, if you mix it with modernity, can it still be called traditional? So what, what what's the place? How are you navigating that, that issue, mm -hmm. keeping it traditional at the same time? Uh, trying to make it global? Well, the, the perfect example, I'm not even going to take an artist from, from Senegal, but the perfect example, because she's a female and it's someone I, I, I listen to, it's Sona Jobate. She plays the kora. The kora is one of the most ancient instruments on the continent, especially in, in, in the Gambia, in Senegal. She plays the chora, but I mean, she's doing, she was actually on tour in the US. Um, a, I think she has had something like 20, 20 dates in the US. Um, so it's modern music, but she's using a traditional instrument that's over a hundred years. So it's, 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 it's easy to blend the two and it's more than possible. Um, people have done it over the past couple of years. And I mean, the result is, is just amazing. We have another great Quora player who lives in saint we in the northern region of, of Senegal, Ablai Sisaho, who's doing an incredible job and who has worked with different artists um, outside of, of Africa who are doing other types of music. Um, they released an album and he's touring the world. So it's, it's, it's very possible. I know that for a very long time, people were very reticent but we realize that it's 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 more than possible. When we take the ta tama, uh, what Yusundu calls the talking drum, he's been using it for years. And I mean, the talking drum is also called it's also considered a, a traditional instrument because uh, it was it was used back in the days um, by the the Rio tribes. Um, and he's using it in his mbala music. And Yusundu, I mean, he's an international superstar. We've recently seen. Um, Baba Mal in, in, in Black Panther, the same thing. He was with Masamba Jok, who plays the talking drum. So we, we, we've we realized that not only it's possible, but it, it brings a new flavor um, into this modern music. And that's what we needed, because if not, it's just going to be the same thing that we're repeating over and over again. It's pretty much the same music that comes and, and, and goes. Um, but with these traditional instruments, you just bring a, a, a new flavor. Which is which is beautiful. Um, 
I, I see... think let me, may, maybe I think Jara is is Isaka yes. Jara raising yes. her hand, so <laughs> you can ask your question. Oh, okay. Um, well, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Awesome. Um, I'm Isia Kajara from Mali. I'm currently uh, in Philly for my Fulbright program. I arrived just one week ago, and oh, I'm nice. really happy to take part to this uh, meeting, to this African Eye, um, eye of, on Africa. And then I really... I'm really happy to, when I saw it, I said, I'm going to take part to this. I'm really happy to meet uh, Maimuna Dambele for the first time. And then uh, I am Isiaka, her jo oh, joking cows, and I'm working on the Kuruka Fuka. And that's why I will start telling her she's my joking cows. <laughs> and then after that, I really uh, followed the, this presentation with great pleasure. And then my question was about, uh, you said that currently uh, with the music industry, uh, it's creating new job at the local market. And then I wanted to understand how does it creating, how does it work now? I want to understand because I want to have an idea about how does it work, how the people, the local people are making money in it. Uh, I want to have a, a larger, broader understanding about it. Then maybe I can help my colleagues back home uh, making much more money. I know even, even if I'm not working on music, I'm interested in some, some friend with the Right. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you, Isaka, for my my cousin for right. your question. Uh, and I hope you're settling in because one week it's it's just like it was yesterday. Hope Definitely. you're settle settling in perfectly. Uh, well, for example, when I take the example of a concert, uh, when you organize a concert, you need at least at least, and I mean this is really a small concert but you need at least 20, 20 staff members, at least. And that's really for a small concert because there's sound lightning, there's sound engineer, there's um, stage management, there's lightning, there's stage, the stage, there's the instruments that you have to put together. So all of that is, it's, it's different people for doing different jobs. And then you have to make sure that you have the great sound, the great lightning, uh, the video operators. So it's at least, at least, and like I said, when it's really a small concert. Um, for example, if I take the example of Senegal, when we do concerts at the French Institute, um, the French Institute is, is, is really a small venue. It's about 400 um, seats. But when we do a concert, it's at least 20 people who, who work um, night and day to make sure that um, we can provide that concert is the ones who are selling the tickets. So there's just so many people in the background that you don't see, but they are the ones doing all the job to make sure that you can sit uh, front row seat and enjoy a concert. And like I said, that's for a small concert. But when we're taking big venues, like last year we did our access, when we do access, we have not less than 80 people um, working on access because we have workshops. So we have the different people working on the workshops and the ones giving the workshops. Uh, we have the, the different showcases. So we have all those people working uh, on the stage and getting ready for the showcases. We have at least 80 people that we hire who work uh, on it. So depending on 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 the how big your event is or how small it is, you might go from 20 people to maybe 200, 300 people. I went to Womex and I'm getting ready to go back in October. Womex are big stages, so we have hundreds and hundreds of people um, who are working on it. So it really depends on, 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 on how big your event is. But like I said, even if it's a small event, you have at least 20 people who are working on it. I got it. It was awesome. I understood it pre uh, pretty well now. And then also I want to extend my greeting to Awasa. I guess she, this is the Awasa from um, Michigan, I guess. And then Sango, Dr. Sango talked to me about her. I guess this is the Awasa I 
see her face for the first time because Dr. Sango talked to me about her. I didn't know her before, but it's a great opportunity also for me to meet her. Thank you so much, and indeed, for the answer of your question. I was clear and perfect. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Saka. So I think we have questions in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. You want to read them? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so grants for musicians is pivotal for synergy in the global market. What are the rules of the foundation to sustain African music? Well, the role of, of our foundation, I cannot speak for other foundations, um, is we create, we created a portal um, for musicians, for artists to be seen, to be able to work and to collaborate with um, other artists from around the world. But we also created access. That's why we wanted to give a stage um, to artists on the continent. So we created access. And like I said, we go every single year in a different African city. So we work with local organizations to make sure that um, for four or five days, all the delegates um, are in, a, in, in, in one city. So you have the tourism sector that works at least for a week. Um, you have all these components uh, that I mentioned earlier to, to, to Jara, who, who work on um, making sure that um, the workshops are, are going well, um, all the ones that are working on the showcases, because we do have different showcases every night. So during a week, we are, uh, we're not as big as Womex yet, but we're, we're getting bigger and bigger. And honestly, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure we created the, 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 the platform, the portal, um, it was going, it's going well. And then we were like, what can we do more? What can we do more? Um, so we created access and access is also because we have conversations with governments. When we go in a city, we do have this conversation uh, with the government um, through the Ministry of Culture is also artist mobility because it's a real issue. It's it's really hard. It's not artist mobility is not just being on the African continent and trying to go to Europe or trying to go to the US. Visa visa issues is 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 just insane on the continent. Sometimes it's even easier to travel to go to Europe than to travel on the continent. It's really hectic. So it's also these conversations that we're having around artist mobility. Why is it hard for someone who holds a Senegalese passport to get a visa and go to South Africa. So these are conversations we've been having. Um, hopefully in a few years, you know, uh, we'll be able to, to, to tackle that and it's going to be on the side. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, so Music in Africa has created that, has provided that uh, for artists and will grow in each and every year and we're coming with um, new projects each and every year. Uh, so that's that's what we're doing. Um, so I hope um, that answers your question. And then the other question is from Jim. Um, could you provide an overview of West African Francophone artists? Well, um, the female artists, I have to say, are doing great. Uh, we have Nyagore from Côte d'Ivoire who's, who's doing um, awesome. Uh, we have the example of Sona Jobate that I gave earlier, who's doing great touring the world. We have the example of Fatumata Jawara from Mali, who's doing amazing. Uh, and when we take Mali as a whole, I mean, female artists have been just doing great for, for the past couple of years. We have someone like um, Umu Sangahe, who's, who's doing um, incredible. We have someone like Rokia Traore also. Um, who's doing great. So the female artists, the female artists are doing really, really great. But what, what we've realized is also because those female artists um, still use traditional instruments, work with a lot of people um, who use traditional in instruments. When we take the example of Mali, you know, um, they're, they're very proud of their Mandinka tribe and heritage. So we, you, you, you still feel that. Um, in their music, which is amazing, which is a beautiful music. Uh, but what we've realized over the years is also um, because it's Francophone Africa, um, it's hard for Francophones to communicate 
with English speaking countries. Uh, so most of the time it's 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 really hard. Uh, we have now more and more artists um, on the francophone side who are trying um, to speak English. And so now even in their music who are trying to have uh, music, but when you have an authentic music um, with an authentic sound, no matter what language you use, people will listen to it. If we take um, the example of Umu Halsun, who's from Mauritania, she 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 sings in Arabic, but she's she's doing great. Um, and like I said, we've realized that it's really the female artists um, who are doing great. Maybe it's because they understand um, better how to go on 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 the global market. Uh, but they're doing they're doing incredible. Um, Senegal, um, it's a different story because Senegal, uh, we're still into that Mbalah music, uh, which is our 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 music. And Mbalah is not something that everyone listens to. With Yusundu, for example, when we take um, Yusundu because he's um, our international artist, he will always have an album release for Senegal and the same album for the um, for the international world uh, with different sounds because Mbala, I think only Senegalese people will really listen to Mbala. So um, our artists are still, you know, doing Mbala. There's this young artist, um, his name is Wali Sek and his late dad was also from the Yusundo generation, Tron Sek. So his son, um, he was in the US just before the pandemic and he was able to meet with Chris Brown and other um, American artists. Um, and he's been following also the Afrobeat um, in Nigeria. And he realized that if he wanted to go global, he has to do the same thing as Yusundu is he will still have his Mbala because he have a public for, for the Mbala music in Senegal. But if he wants to go global, he, he needs to do something else. And the, the last album he released it's a 100% Afrobeat album. And um, he's starting to have gigs in, in the UK, in a few countries in Europe, and even in the US. So that's the example of Senegal. But Mali is, 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 is doing pretty great. Um, and like I said, it's because um, they maintain that Mandinka culture um, that they're very, very, very proud of. Is like someone like Sidi Kijabate who really sings um, in French, but he's doing great because it's also the the, the Malian Kora um, that he's using and using singing in, in Mandinka, but he's he's doing amazing. So that's for um, Francophone um, Africa. Um, okay, before next... maybe, before we take, maybe let's give Isaac uh, the floor he wants. And Isaac is a colleague of mine. He works at African Studies and he's a great musician and singer. Oh, so I nice. go ahead. <laughs> I hope the center will produce his album. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, our for those kind words. And uh, thank you, Maimuna, for this very refreshing uh, presentation. As I was said, I'm a musician myself. So nice. I um I'm very uh, pleased to hear you talk about African music and uh all the positive things that are going on with African music. I just wanted to add to the uh, question that was asked earlier on about uh, how African music creates jobs. And I think that's an important one. And I think uh, it, it, it's something that should be recognized across Africa because we might be missing an opportunity here to grow our economies through music. Uh, it's, it's lamentable when we let music go without really supporting it because you started to give examples of how people get employed uh, with music. And I just wanted to add to those examples. So for example, when a musician goes into the studio to record a song, they rely on possibly up to 15, 20 people, musicians doing different things on the album, for example. And that means that each and every person who's there is getting paid for that work. Um, the producer and the studio get paid, which means that they stay in business and can, can continue to employ a number of people who do different things to keep that studio open. Um, and music making is a process and a chain. Uh, when you finish making a song, uh, your next stage is really to have a video. 
uh, videos are really important. So that means, and your producer is not going to do that for you. The person who owns the studio is, is not, that's not their specialty. So you have to find someone else who does the video, who employs maybe three or four or five, depending again on the size of their operation. Uh, they employ three or four or five other people to help you do the video. But when you do a video, you want to look good. So that means you have to find a tailor to make your outfits. You can't wear what you wear every day in a video. You cannot wear what you wear to go to the market in a video. You've got to look exceptional. You've got to look different. So they, your fashion designers come in. So they get, and that's not just you, that's you and the whole crew, which again could be up to 20 people in a video. Uh, so outfits are being made and tailors are getting paid. Um, once that video is out, it goes on to the broadcasting stations. And as you know, broadcasting stations thrive on um, um, advertisements. And uh, people want to advertise where the good music is and where the good, the well-dressed people are, where the exciting things are happening. So your local advertisers for all aspects of the economy will pay money to the radio, to the TV station that is playing your music or the radio station that is playing your music because they are finding that uh, it is popular. Uh, you also have many, many other ways in which uh, people are employed. If you do concerts, as Maimuna said, you're going to need to employ a lot of people to run the concert. But then there are other outside people. Like a lot of times, if you go to festivals, you're going to need booths with people selling all kinds of things, from clothes to food. There are many, many uh, secondary products that get sold uh, at music performances. So music really helps contribute to the humming of an economy. To the to the to the humming. I mean, as in hum, not harm. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to keep an economy vibrant, uh, mu music is a is a major uh, uh, contributor. Uh, so, I think that our business people and our political leaders need to really pay attention to music as a strong source. Uh, the growth of the music industry can only do well for Africa in terms of. Uh, uh, GDP, growth of GDP. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. I thought you were going to sing to us something. That's, that's <laughs> what I thought. I thought that's how you were going to end your contribution. <laughs> look me up. Look me up on um, YouTube, King Isaac we'll, Music. And will do. And you'll hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I think there's another question mm -hmm. from another Isaac Basima. Um, thanks a lot. Just asking, can we still talk of African or traditional music with all the fluidity that exists in the music and song performance all around the continent? Yes, we can still talk about African music. We can still talk about traditional music. Um, I mean, no matter how the fluidity um, is, when we take the Kora, for example, when we take Sona Jobate, no matter how many collaborations, I mean, even she, if she was um, to do a futuring with Beyonce tomorrow, he, who's a global um, pop artist, even if she was to to do um, a featuring with, with Beyonce. She will play her traditional Quora music. She will still sing in, in, in her Mandinka, Gambian Mandinka uh, voice. And, and, and that is traditional music because that's, a, that's still considered a traditional instrument, um, the Quora music. So there are some instruments, um, as long as you're using them, people will always, always refer to it, no matter how many futurings you do with, you name it, the big pop, pop stars, it's going to be considered um, in some way traditional music because you have included a traditional um, instruments to it. Um, and that's, when you listen to Sonajo Bate or when you listen to her interviews or even 
talk to her. That's for her. That's that's her roots. That's that's how she um, she was taught music. She was taught music the traditional way with the traditional instrument. It was passed on to her grandfather from her father to her grand from her grandfather to her father to her. So she's saying that's that's the instruments. Um, that's really the the base of her music. So no matter what, it's still going to be um, considered tradi traditional music. And I think we're um, living in an era where people are going back to what was happening in the days. Even when we take hip hop music, um, you listen to, to 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 hip hop music. There are so many samples that are traditional music from the fifties, from the sixties, from the continent. Um, you listen to modern music, but people will still find a way to sample um, traditional music from back in the days. Uh, I mean, look at the vinyl. Uh, it was gone for, for a while. It's coming back. People are bringing back the vinyl. So we're also living in that era where people feel like they've done it all uh, with modernity and that now they have to go back to the roots. Um, and that's why we're talking a lot about the African continent. And um, as as you see, if we take each and every sector, um, the fashion industry, the, the music industry, the movie industry in Nigeria, it's just booming because for people, it's important to go back to the roots and the roots is, is on the continent. Well, hey, Christopher, thank you for your question regarding copyright. That's a big issue. Uh, that's a very big issue. It's a big issue first because um, a lot of artists, we, we do have organizations that work uh, around copyright, but we still live in countries where an artist is really doing music because he's passionate about doing music. He does not uh, think about the business aspect of it. So we have a lot of artists who do not actually even go to these copyright organizations. That's one. And two, I mean, you know, everyone has a smartphone on the continent. We still, people still find a way to download music illegally. So it's a real issue. Uh, people are trying to find ways um, to tackle that, but it's a, it's, it's a big issue. Uh, I was in a in a meeting because when we do access, we do invite people from SASM, um in France to talk about copyright issues. And that's what they say, you know, now in France, it's different because people are getting paid. Uh, so they have a card. But on the continent, it's just complicated to to ask an artist to go register himself um, so that these organizations can help them. So first, it's it's to be able to have the artist do that. Um, and secondly, find ways um, to, to tackle illegal download. For now on, it's still a big issue. Um, people are working on it. The people who are supposed to work are working on it with governments. And hopefully in, in a few years, we'll be, we'll be able to get that um, out of the way. Thank you very much. Maimona, so any questions or comments? Uh, so I have a question here from Mike. It's, he, mm -hmm. he wanted to really ask it, but he's saying he is in a coffee shop and it's really oh. loud. <laughs> so this is his first question. In what ways in music in Africa, in what ways is music in Africa engaged in the political and social justice movement on the African continent, especially in the post-COVID world? Well, <laughs> great question, Mike. Um, music in Africa, I think uh, what we're trying to do is also give a platform to each and every artist. Um, when you follow Senegal, and, and, and I think you, we had quickly this conversation, when we take the example of, of Yona Mar, uh, they had a conference a few years ago and we were a sponsor. So because we're open, we're not engaging ourselves, you know, as music in Africa, we cannot go sit at a table or go to a radio station or a TV station. But when artists like that who are marginalized um, 
uh, who are oppressed um, because they're speaking their mind, because they're talking about social justice, come to us. Uh, we help in any ways we can. We co-produced um, an, al an album with Sahad. Sahad is, is considered um, a very marginalized artist in, in, in Senegal because um, he's all about social justice. Uh, so we did produce that. We did invite him uh, when, we were, when we were having access in, in Nairobi um, to one of our workshops. And it's, it's topics that we also have during um, our talks uh, when we have access in, in different cities. And because it's, it's important, uh, and because we have to have these conversations, uh, I mean, it's important for us not only to 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 feel safe, uh, but to make sure that the artists that we're working on on the continent are also safe. We did a collaboration with a brother of ours who's in Burkina Faso when things were very, very heated in Burkina Faso because he has a small festival. At the last minute, he wanted to cancel because all the people who were supposed to support him at the end said no because of um, the political turmoil. We still went there and it was a great festival. Music in Africa was there to support. And like I said, it's very important for, for us to, to also have um, these platforms for the artists that we work with. Thank you. I think there is another question in the Q&A. Didn't see it. Uh, which radio? Well, um, BBC Africa does a lot on African music. Um, and they even have um a show called um Road Trip to Africa, which is a, a very beautiful show. Uh, where they work with someone um from the country who takes them through music on a, on a road trip. I, I did the one for Senegal a couple of years ago. So BBC and BBC is, is, is really uh, uh, one of our partners. Um, that's in terms of radio. Um, in terms of magazine, we have, have song lines. Once again, it's, it's the UK, but you know that um, British have been listening to to African music for ages and ages and ages. We know that Fela used to go to the UK a lot. So they're pretty much um, different than maybe other European countries. Uh, so in terms of magazine, we have Songline magazines, uh, which is um, also owned by, by a British company. Um, they talk a lot uh, about African music. They do a lot of interviews with, with artists. So yeah, Isiaka, if I was um, to say, I would definitely say um, BBC. Any other questions or comments? No, I don't see. So I, ha I can read it for you. There is growing collaborations between African artists and American and other Western artists. How do you view such growth in exposure to African music and Western awareness of African culture, society, and history? Well, um, for us, the first important thing is when there's collaboration, we want the African artists to be treated um, the same way as, as the American artists, for example, because in, in the past, that was not the case. I think that now things are, are different because African artists are surrounding themselves with people who know a lot um, about the music industry. Um, but um, I don't think it's just exposure for the African um, artists. I think it's also exposure for the American artists. Uh, like I said, uh, yes, Burna Boy has put Nigeria um, on, on, on the global map. But now, today, every American artist wants to do a collaboration with Burna Boy. Every American artist wants to do um, a, a, a collaboration with, I'm just giving the example of Yemi Alade. Uh, so it's exposure for the African artists, yes, but it's also, I think, um, 
exposure for the American artists, they don't always come on the continent. We've had the big, big, big festival of Negro arts uh, a few years ago in Senegal. And we were able to bring a lot of um, African-American artists, even Lauren Hill was, was here. Um, but, you know, we don't have big festivals like this every year, um, not in Senegal. You have the Afro Nation now in Ghana. And this year we've seen artists like Usher. Uh, we've seen a couple of other artists um, who, were, who were there, Kendrick Lamar, who was in Ghana. Um, so Ghana is doing also great in, in terms of exposure. And we're seeing these um, American artists who are uh, coming to Africa either to, 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 to work or for a concert. Kendrick Lamar was there for a video um, that he was shooting. Asha was there for Afro Nation. Um, he gave two concerts. So it's also exposure for them. And like I said, you know, more and more people are going back to their roots. Um, sampling music from the continent. So it's also important for them to come to the continent and see uh, see what they can hear. I mean, if we take the example of, of Babel Mal uh, with the producer of the music of Black Panther, he was saying he just, when we listened to, to Gorasan, he was saying he wanted a different sound. He wanted an African sound and he knew that he could only find it in Africa. So he came to Africa uh, and ended up in, in, in Senegal and ended up be, meeting Babu Mal. And that's how he was able to, to record the drums in, in Babu Mal's studio. So it's also very important for them to come to the continent and see what's going on. How do you encourage young people to be music professionals in Africa? There's a challenge to have access to financial resources in order to promote music in Africa. Um, there was a lot of um challenges but i i did mention earlier that now big organizations like the the the, the fme um imf uh a division of the world bank is it is investing a lot of money um in the music um industry in the cultural sector um as a whole uh we have the african union um who's putting a lot of money in it and we have a couple of governments um, depending on the countries, we do have governments who are also putting a lot of money because they understand that it's a it's a big business. Uh, but for African artists, it's 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 really you have to you have to know what you're doing. Yes, you might have a great voice. Yes, you might be passionate, but by what you're doing, but it's a business. So you might have you might you have to know what you're doing. Uh, if you're only good in getting into the studio and making hit records. Make sure you have a great manager. Make sure you have a great lawyer. Make sure you have someone who will read the contracts for you. So you have to make sure that you're surrounded by amazing people. Burnaway is doing good because he's managed by his mom. So she has his best interest at heart. You have to surround yourself. You have to make sure that your team, um, they have your best interest at, at heart if you want to make it. But um, yeah, uh, honestly, we have a lot of organizations who are putting a lot of money now um, into 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 the music industry and into the 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 cultural um, industry? So you have to, of course, go to platforms, make sure that you have the information. But the information is out there. If you look for it, um, you will find it. Maybe before we go to the next written question, Christopher raised his hand. Christopher, you may speak. Yes, yes. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, Sister Maimuna, greetings, and Sister Sai, greetings as well. Um, I'm going to give you a blast from the past. Um, a Festac 1977, does that ring a bell to you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, fest, so basically, for those it, whom it rings a bell, we are effectively... Um, um, uh, showing our age, right? But this is what <laughs> I think is missing because that was the, the mm. second All Black Arts Festival that it, that yep. was put together in Nigeria. That was 1977. Yeah. A lot of years have passed. There's like 50 mm. years coming mm. up, and that is mm. that is very shameful, I think. Mm. And so mm. I would just like to put that seed out there. Um, now that there's a certain awareness and a consciousness that is, you know, coming back, 
I think we also need to recognize that we are not where we used to be and we're not where we should be. Mm. Uh, in the 70s, we had a thriving film industry in different parts of Africa. Those films are cultural heritages. They're lost. We need to regroup them again. We need to revive them. And same with music. A lot of our music is lost and we need to revive it again. Um, we need to, there are different organizations that are working in the field, like you indicated, but we need to coordinate. Each one of us, you know, out there on our own in the wilderness, there's only so much we can do. But if we combine efforts, if, we, if we're able to identify the synergies, then we start having movement. And this is what I would like to put out there and plea. We need a, a third all black arts festival where we are bringing our brothers and sisters of African descent from the entire world together to celebrate ourselves, celebrate the fact that all we have overcome against all odds and we're still here standing firm. We should reach out to, which we did in 77, we reached out to our brothers and sisters in Australia, even though they're not directly, but you know what? We welcome you into the family and get them in. And if we do not tell our story, if we do not say who we are, it is other people that keep telling us who we are. So we have to take the narrative, we have to take the initiative, hey, it's not Black Panther Wakanda, which is an illusion. Let's take that illusion and make it real. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Um, I think Afro Nation is, in a way, trying, and, and, and Ghana is not as big as as best that uh, Abdullah Iwad, our former president, um, did it also. He, he, he tried um, something big, but I totally agree with you, and we have to find ways to make it happen and, and and make sure that every maybe because it's a huge festival every five years um it's happening on on the continent i i totally agree with you uh, but it also given the political situation on the continent it's also so complicated you might start working on a project for example we had a project in in, in gabon for next year but for now on it's it's on hold so it's also complicated but i totally agree um, this is conversations we need to have and have to do it. I, I, I agree. We're still a small foundation at Music in Africa. We're trying to, 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 to do our best. But um, yeah, we can, we, can, we can continue this conversation because I, 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 I love the idea. And, and it's, it's, it's really important we, we do something for the continent as, as a people. I think Isaac might want to add something. Yeah, sure. He's going to sing for us? <laughs> not not today. <laughs> I just want to agree with uh, Brother Christopher about having some kind of uh, concert or, you know, a series of concerts that recognize who we are, where we are coming from and what we've done. But uh, let's not forget that Panafest does exist in Ghana. In and, Ghana. And, and in Panafest, every four years, they bring... Uh, you know, people of African descent from the Caribbean, from America, and from across Africa to do uh, concerts throughout that. Uh, I think it's a one week con uh, concerts with conferences. It's really a big festival of uh, appreciation of uh, the African heritage. But uh, there is room to do more. Uh, and uh, I, I think with all these collaborations that are happening, uh, we are missing an opportunity to bring those people who have collaborated to come together and do concerts and mm. share their songs uh, with the uh, audiences across Africa. When will you make the equivalent of US for Africa by African artists? Well, we're doing our own version of um, US for Africa. We're doing Africans for Africa whenever there's something going on artists do get together recently we've seen someone like dj awadi who's one of the pioneers in in the hip-hop music here in senegal he has worked with um 
Stomi from Burkina Faso. They worked with Mewe from Cote d'Ivoire and other artists in different parts of Africa. And they were talking about dictatorship in, in, in Africa and what we're seeing now. Uh, so yeah, whenever there's an issue, when there was COVID, they did the same thing. So we're not doing it as as big as 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 um, U.S. for Africa, but whenever there is there is a serious issue, um, Pan African artists do get together uh, and and work and collaborate together. So it's 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 happened. Any other questions or comments? Well, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much, Maimona, for coming and sharing well, with us today. And thank you for everybody for your questions, your comments. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And wishing you a great, great, great season. Uh, and my last word will be invest in, in, in music in Africa. Uh, it's There's a lot of potential. Um, there is a lot going on on the continent and we all have to be part of it. So come invest in it, come support. Um, it's really important. And Awa, again, thank you so much. Um, we finally did it. Thank we you, did thank it. you we for did. having me. <laughs> Wishing you all a great, great, great season um, and um, see you soon. Thank you so much. And again, thank you everybody. We'll see you next time.